All right. Hello, friends. Welcome back. It is uh, a gray and sort of hazy Saturday here in Seattle. Uh, but uh, it was a really nice rest of the week, so hopefully it clears up by the afternoon. Sometimes it does that here. Um, hope you're all doing well. I uh, have missed dancing a lot this week because I've done a little bit more than I have been lately. We had a Wednesday night class for Patreon subscribers that was uh, a Zoom class, and we talked about solo jazz technique and things, um, and that was really fun. Thanks for everybody that showed up there. Um, we are going to do that again this yeah, Wednesday. Um, it might be at a slightly different time. I think we'll do it a little bit later because we have a bunch of requests for that. So if you're uh, curious about that, um, keep an eye on your Patreon messages. I'll get that out uh, this weekend or Monday when I finally figured out what, what all people need for timing on that. Um, but we'll be doing uh, a bunch more solo jazz technique and, and that sort of thing, um, less choreography. So if you're interested in combining that with this one, um, we'll be talking about how to do some of the moves and different styling options and some of the history behind the moves um, and hopefully keeping that uh, engaging in a different but complementary way. Um, uh, in case you weren't here last week, uh, the Syncopation Foundation shirts that you ordered should be in. So if you ordered one and you did not get that, let us know. Um, that's an exciting new thing. We've never had Syncopation Foundation merchandise before. Um, we'll be doing another order of some kind of thing in the relatively near future, but um, I have a few options we're still bouncing around. Uh, today, uh, the music is going to be by uh, Greg Ruby, who I'm sure you're all familiar with by now. Um, the warm-up we're doing is uh, from his new album that he put out during quarantine. So you can jump over to the Bandcamp link down there in the doodly-doo and, uh, and check that out. And the choreography is to um, a song by a very dear friend of mine, uh, Miss Mikey May, over in um, Bruno in the Czech Republic. Um, she runs a band there, and they went from having no swing music scene at all uh, to starting a blues band. Um, and they do some cool, uh, like, bluesy stuff. They do some 1960s kind of jump blues, um, more swing-ish stuff. Um, we're going to be doing one of their songs today. Um, not a, an original tune, but it's uh, an old, old tune that they're doing um, their version of. One of the cool things about their band is they have a Hammond organ, which is something you don't hear all that often, um, but was put to great use in bands like with Count Basie or uh, Alan Dawson played in Lionel Hampton's band. Um, so we'll, we'll point that out when we get there in the song, too. Um, but we're going to get started with the uh, warm-up here in just a second. Um, so find yourself some space. I'm going to jump over by the piano here and dance around like a crazy person. And I recommend you do your best impersonation of what I'm doing. Um, but one thing I want to make sure you're doing uh, is warming up all of your body. So don't just try and do the footwork that I'm doing. Keep your core engaged. Try and keep that, those muscles right below your belly button a little bit toned all the time. And that'll help uh, fire up that warm-up. And then look for ways to open up your body. So try and make it wide this way and long this way uh, while we're doing this warm up. So you're not just practicing footwork, you're also actually getting into a shape that you'll like to, to dance from and it'll be successful for you. So uh, let's get on that. I'm gonna put on Just a Little Swing uh, by Greg Ruby here. And it's actually the name of the song, Just a Little Swing. It's not just a little swing. Um, from their new album they just put out on Bandcamp uh, exclusively. It's nowhere physically yet. It's just online. Um, and that is this one. <laughs> Thank you. 
bit to break through the clouds here a little bit. Um, it's good to see y'all. Let's see. Um, if you uh, are enjoying uh, the way that we've been teaching things, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to change it up a little bit today, but we'll go back and forth some. I had a lot of requests for, um, well, several requests for uh, teaching more in the style of our warm-up. So our choreography today is going to be a bit more riff-based. So um, a riff in the music is when the the band kind of repeats, the background kind of part of the band repeats a little mini melody over and over again. So um, let's show you a little bit here. Something like this. So uh, that, that's sort of a, a riff um, bit going on. The, the reason it's not just a melody line is you know, the whole section's doing it. It's kind of scripted, right? It's not um, just a trumpet player going doodly 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 doodly. Uh, it's all the same thing kind of chugging through. It's really popular in places like Kansas City back in the, in the swing era. Um, but uh, Miss Mikey May's band, that's like their jam. Um, and this version of Working Grinder Swing, they play the original riffs from this tune a bit. The, the original uh, head, they play through it all the way. And then they go off on their own riff journey. So uh, we're going to jump into the organ grinders here um, with their namesake song. We're using Organ Grinder Swing. Um, so we're going to start off. Uh, first, we're going to find the, the pulse in this song. It's not hard to find, I think. Kind of beats you over the head with it. And uh, disclaimer, I am starting us off uh, a bit slower than what we just played there. I'm going to start us off about uh, 165 beats per minute. The song is about 185, but we'll, we'll, we'll work our way up. Um, but we're going to start off by just doing a bounce. Um, we're going to do a, a, a half time bounce, so we're not going um, evenly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're doing that, but on those even numbers, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna get a little bit deeper into that bounce. Um, the way I kind of think about it is maybe weird, but it works for me. If I was bouncing my hand on a little miniature trampoline, normally I can be like a bounce, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna go bounce, boing, bounce, boing, bounce, boing. So the extra energy that goes into that lift isn't the lift itself. It's gonna be my butt pushing down extra hard into that trampoline. So let's try that together. We're gonna go even for eight counts, and then well, emphasizing the two and four for eight counts. I'm gonna switch back and forth a few times. So that goes five, six, seven, eight. Normal two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, bounce, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. All right, if that's making sense, we're going to add a little bit of arm movement to it. And we're going to do the natural flow for arms on this one. Um, so I'm not trying to do anything fancy. We're not doing the, the jazz hands that we worked on with our CZQs on uh, Wednesday. Uh, we're just doing one. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And every time that I pass through uh, is on those big bounces. So I can go a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got a smooth bounce. Get kind of smooth arms going on too. When I go one, ah, oh, yeah. It kind of shakes those hands down. And that's coming from me releasing my arms to fall past my legs. So I'm not going one, two, three, Four. That's weird, right? It's sort of disingenuous. I want to go one, and I'm letting my body pull my arms down. I'm also not throwing my hands. It's not one, two, three, four. That again has some stiffness to it. It's a swing. And I want to find it just like when you're on the swings as a kid. You know, that slow part up here, and then it gets a little faster toward the bottom, and it slows down as it's changing direction because you are the pendulum. So my arms are going to do this. Two, three, four. Ah. There's a little bit of a catch in the front and back of my armpits to keep it from bouncing on those odd numbers, but on the even numbers, I just let it go. Ta, ta, chi, ka, ah, chi, ah, chi, ah. Uh, so we're gonna do this uh, to the first whole phrase of the song. We're just gonna have this pulse. Uh, and as I play it for you, I think you'll see why. So that whole first bit, we're just going to warm up our audience. Um, if you uh, took the Big Apple class with me a couple weeks ago, um, the opening of Big Apple is really, really similar, right? They just come out there and they do the shouts for the first whole section before the before the break and into the into the actual choreography. Um, so for our bit, we're gonna go one ba 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 da 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 So it's in front on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, and that can be deceptive. So remember if we're starting on the front on count one, then we need to be passing through here on eight, which means on seven before we start, we need to have our hands back a little bit. So you always have to think of a couple beats back when you're jumping into something like this. So you'll hear the, the um, piano player say, one, two, three, four. And that's when we're gonna go down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, and it's not just the two four. Remember, we have that little pulse in between on the odd numbers too. So it's bounce down, bounce down, bounce down, bounce down. Um, so let's try that with music. Uh, we're going to add some some things with your feet too, but I want to get that pulse in there because that's kind of the main part of the move. And if you do have questions, I do have the uh, chat open on the side here, so just uh, type those in, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. <laughs> Oh my 
more time. Cool. Um, so uh, again, I, I mentioned this a bunch when we were doing the Big Apple routine. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this, and pretty much everything that myself or other folks uh, in the current era are doing is is an in interpretation or a kind of a knockoff of that original stuff. So you're always allowed to cheat and go back to the original source material. So use that intro to Big Apple when they're doing the shouts and find your own style, this kind of thing. What I do want to make sure is that whatever version you're doing, we get uh, that, that hit. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, I'm going to let you choose. You can go down on the even numbers, or you can go down on those odd numbers a little bit, but I want to make sure that the, the rhythm that you're making emphasizes the even numbers more than the odd numbers. Um, so here, uh, one, two, three, four, or you could go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and have a pop on those even numbers and go down on the odds. Um, I'll try to remember to vary back and forth between which ones I'm doing, because what's important to me is that you're actually connecting to what the band is doing, not doing like Ben said, execute for pattern 47C. Um, so I want to actually use this to get into the song a little bit. I uh, hope that makes sense. Um, then we're going to start with some Shorty Georges. Uh, this is just, again, exactly quoting from the Big Apple, um, but it matches the rhythm here really nicely. So we're going to do Hesitation Shorty Georges, which is kicking out of the side with your right foot. Your ball change steps in about halfway through your other foot, so I'm putting the, the little bump on the side of my foot into the arch of my other foot, kick, ball, change. And then I step on the pinky of my left foot on the change. So that's kick, ball, change. When I do that, I'm stepping, again, I'm just a half step in front of my left from my right. That means that if I squeeze my upper thighs together really hard, my right knee tends to stick into my left knee pit. And that's great because it gives us the illusion of having our legs kind of broken off to the side without actually breaking your knees. So this move should not be painful. If it is painful, uh, you get something a little bit off in the calibration, or maybe even you just don't have the muscles built yet to support it correctly. So come up a little taller and, and it should, until it doesn't hurt. Um, so when we're doing this, my disclaimer is this is okay. Don't worry about it if it's this tall. Um, if you want to get crazy and get down low, that's also totally fine, but make sure it's something that's supported. I know a lot of us haven't been dancing for months, so take care of yourselves. So we have kick, ball, change. I weight is on the left foot. I'm going to slide my right foot about the length of my foot forward. So the left bump on my big toe goes into the right arch, and the weight goes onto the right foot. My left knee pit is now in my right, or my left knee is now in my right knee pit. And then I take a half step forward with my left. I'm going to slide my legs past each other. And then to the right, and the left, and the right, and the left. So that's on count eight. We'll do eight and one, two, three, five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three. And uh, we're going to be hitting exactly what the band hits here, which is really convenient. Um, so let's listen to that real quick. Uh, and then I'll actually tell you the counts, too. This is a... Back. Short and short. Eight and one, three, five, seven. So we're hitting that three, five, seven, just like the horns are in there. So um, we have our first bit of the story of Georges, eight and one, two, three. Then we wait on count four. On five, we go to the right. Five, and then on seven, we go to the left. Seven. So let's try that all together. Five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven. It's going to be really, really important that you're on that left foot with your weight on count seven. So you can't be really split very much. A little bit, it can be like 80-20, but I really want to make sure most of my weight is in the left foot because I need to kick my right leg 
on eight. And that's count seven on the left. So we got one more time. Five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven. And my right leg's ready to come up, uh, the knee in front for a kick across my body on the diagonal on eight. So I've got five, six, five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, eight. Um, that kick across the body is going to be another kickball change, but it's going to be rotational. So I'm kicking 45 degrees to my left with my right leg. I'm letting that sweep around and tuck the big toe of my left foot into the arch of my right foot. So we're going into apple jacks here. If you've been taking the class with us for a while, you already know how that works. But just in case, here's a quick primer. Uh, we do that kickball change. We step down to the right. It's about 45 degrees up to the right. And then I tuck my left big toe into the right arch. Kind of like I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, so we got just that kickball change. Five, six, seven, eight, and one. And my weight's totally on that forced arch on my left foot. So I'm on the toes of my left foot. And I'm going to roll that foot down. And this is kind of toe heel, like a cat pressing into the laundry. I want to work my foot through the floor from the toe all the way down to the heel. And it's not a ba-oom, so I'm not trying to make those two different sounds. I'm trying to roll through the foot kind of smoothly. Um, while I'm rolling through that foot, I'm going to fan out my pinky toes on the foot that's stepping. So I'm stepping with my right foot. I'm going to fan that right foot pinky toe out. Like I'm trying to make a scoop in the sand, like move all the sand with my pinky toe out to the side. So that goes like this. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, and two, and three. Five, a six, a five, six, seven, eight, and one, and two, three, we're going to have that same rhythm because the song is riffing, right? It's going to keep that same thing going over and over again for four times in a row. So we got five, a six, a five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, five, seven. Five, a six, a five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, five, seven. Five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three. Five, seven. So we've got a shorty George, a hesitation shorty George going forward. We've got a hesitation apple jack coming back. We're going to do the shorty George and the apple jack again. So it's just one, two of each alternating. Starting with the shorty George on count eight. Here we go. Five, a six, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three. Five, seven, eight, a one, two, three. Five, Seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven. Was it perfect? Good. Uh, let's try it a couple more times. I'm going to pick up the tempo some. Uh, we were currently at about like 30% slower than the song, so we're going to bump it up about 15%. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, eight, a one, two, three. Five, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, seven. Sweet. I'm assuming that's perfect. Just in case, let's try it with music. So we're going to do our four eight counts of finding that groove in whatever way the spirit moves you. Uh, be ready, though, because on count eight of that second phrase, we're going right into the Shorty Georges. So I'll try and catch you in. But be thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on that seven, on the last eight count, the fourth eight count of that phrase, we're gonna get on the left foot. So at the end of the left, eight, and one, two, three, five, seven. Let's see if that made any sense. Here we go. <laughs> Five, six, five, six, seven. All right, we're 
only 11% slower than that the, the song tempo. So if you rock that, more power to you. Uh, if you didn't rock that and you have questions about how it works, hit it up in the comments. Um, otherwise, it just takes some reps sometimes. Those are both kind of weird moves if you don't do them all the time. Uh, one of the cool things though is they're quarter note moves, right? Normally on a Shorty George or an Applejack, we're just going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and the cool thing about that is it fits with like everything. Um, even if it, you dance to Dave Brubeck and it's five, four time, the quarter notes still fit. Uh, so you can, you can dance those moves on just about anything. So once you get the, the physics of them, the biomechanics of them down, uh, and you get your own style added on top a little bit, they, they let you groove because they're kind of a simple rhythm. Um, and the important thing I want to work on today is finding your own groove on this song. Um, this is, is a newer band. They've only been playing for a couple of years together. Um, and uh, they're a little less polished than some of the bands we dance to, honestly. Um, but they put on some of the best live shows I've ever been to because they'll find that groove and they'll ride it so hard uh, that all the dancers just go nuts for it. Um, and part of that is because uh, Miss Mikey May is a dancer first and now is a has become a musician. Um, but what I want to focus on in this song is really get the move and then own it so hard that you can make it your own. So let's try it again with the music. Starting from our shouts in the beginning. <laughs> Can you feel the groove? Um, it's hard not to. They're kind of hitting you over the head with it. Um, that, uh, that organ in the background is the Hammond organ I was talking about earlier. Uh, if you want to hear some really ridiculously good uh, Hammond organ, check out Lionel Hampton's stuff. There's a guy named Alan Dawson who's famous for being a drummer who also plays some, some disgustingly good Hammond organ. Uh, cool. So we just did our uh, Hesitation Charlie George's, Hesitation Applejacks, twice through each. Now we're going to do a little bit of original choreo. But again, it's going to be riff based and it's totally pulled from the song. So this, it goes back to the original theme of the song, right? Do da 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 do da da. Let's, let's listen to that real quick. So we're going to combine some moves you already know. We're going to keep it pretty simple. We're going to try and stick with that quarter note theme because right now we're working on finding the groove, we're not doing so much tricky rhythms on this one. We're going to start with boogie drops. I'm in with the toe touching the ground. I'm open with the toe touching the ground. And then I'm going to step forward into the third step of my boogie drop. But instead of just going down like I normally would, we're going to skip right into rocks. Just like from the Big Apple. So we're doing boogie rock. So the, the third sound is actually just the front part of the rock. So five, six, seven, and boogie rock. So we have one, two, three, five. That's a lie. One, two, three, four. We're going to make those rocks kind of fast. So we have one, two, three, four. Because the song goes do da da da. And they just hit the corner notes, we're going to write that too. Five, six, seven, eight. Do da da da. So five, six, seven, eight. Do da da da. Five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Uh, we're going to have to practice that on the other side as well in a minute, so I'm going to plow ahead. But if you do have questions on it, then you know that's what the comments are for. Um, cool. So we had, let me make sure I'm not skipping anything here. Oh, it's the wrong choreo. There we go. Page turn. Um, so we have do, 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 da, kick, cross, back. Step. So we have boogie, rock, back. Kick with your right leg, cross, rock, step. And that rock step is going to take me toward the right front corner. So I can tuck in here and do the same thing. So we're switching sides every time, but we're being the same rhythm, the same pattern of moves four times in a row. It's just right side, left side, right side, left side. So let's go through that at approximately half the speed of smell here. Starting with the boogie drop that way, we go five, six, 
seven, eight. Boogie, rock, back, kick, cross, rock, step. Boogie, rock, back, kick, cross, rock, step. Boogie, rock, back, kick, cross, rock, step. Boogie, rock, back, kick, cross, rock. Hopefully that made sense with my stream singing with the, uh, with the steps. Um, let's try it a couple more times. A um, couple of tips for you. Really focus on aiming with your hips when you're going those different directions. Uh, your feet will follow where your hips go. If you think about aiming your feet, it can be really confusing because your body doesn't necessarily follow where your feet go. If you accidentally go pigeon-toed or, or um, turned out too much, um, if you're going uh, here, you have to think about actually moving the leg. But if I just turn my whole hips and torso and everything where I'm headed, it's a little bit easier for me to, to focus on those things. So let's do the, the whole phrase again. Clear the boogie drops to the right. Five, six, seven, eight. Boogie, rock, back, kick, cross, rock, step. 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 I'm assuming it's perfect, so let's try it with music from the top. Starting with our shouts. Go forth and be amazing. Five, six, seven. Probably, um, my guess is you understand the move, but that was fast. Is my is my thought. It's probably what's happening to most folks right now. Um, what we are going to do though is uh, is plow ahead right now. One of the things I want to do is get through the next phrase and then run it a bunch of times and then see where we're at. And I have some more choreography for the bit after that. But what I want to do is make sure we get to the point where we can actually feel the groove. So I want to get four phrases in and then give us some practice, and then we can either add on more or we can take some time to just work on how to dance the thing. Um, so the next steps are our most dense. Um, we're going to be doing some classic, classic Lindy Hopper steps. Um, one of them is Susie Q's, which is like my go-to use for everything. But the first one we're going to do is called Scissor Kicks. So let's uh, break that down real quick in case folks don't know it. We're going to start on your left foot. We kick your right foot to the right. About a 45 degree diagonal. Could be to the front, could be to the side. You'll adjust to taste, but for now let's go look. Somewhere in between. I'm gonna step down to that foot and cross over. Kick, ball change. So five, six, seven, eight. Kick, ball change. Five, six, seven, eight. Kick, ball change. Five, six, seven, eight. Kick, step, cross. Let's do that on the other side as well. So we're on your right foot, we're kicking your left foot out to the left corner, and we go kick. Step, cross. Um, and I'm rolling off of the, the step foot. So in this case, my left one. I go kick, step. And I'm not stepping my right foot across there. I'm bringing my whole body a little bit onto that left side, even though my left foot is the one I'm leaving. So that goes kick, step. I bring my body past my foot. So my right step is actually down. It's not a, out to the side. That's hard to put my weight on, too. So that left side goes five, six, seven, eight, kick, and cross. And one thing I'm doing, we talked about this a second ago, is I'm really focused on where my headlights here are aiming. Um, so I might be a little bit toward that corner, and I'm gonna bring it center as I do my cross. So I'm like, oh, the left side and the center, and the right side and the center. You don't have to move your face there, you can keep an eye on your audience here and kind of scare them down. But I want to make sure that my, my body isn't having to do any weird, like, Cotton Eye Joe action. Uh, and I'm going to do that by making sure I'm just tilting a little bit, especially with my chest, but a little bit with my hips in the direction that I'm kicking. Uh, 
So there's a connecting step that goes in between there uh, in this version of scissor kicks. So we're gonna do a kickball change on the right, really slowly. Six, seven, eight, kick, ball, change. Now my right foot's free, which means we go that way again and end up out of the room. So instead of taking another kick that way, I'm gonna just change weight onto my right foot behind me. So it goes kick, ball, change, step. And this step is just a little bit of a drop onto that right leg. I say drop really intentionally because if you try and just push your foot down, this will be really hard for you at speed. I want to be low enough that I can just fall onto the foot that I need to be on. Um, so we can do that right side with the weight change afterward. Five, six, seven, eight, kick, ball, change, step. You don't get a full count for this one. Um, it's going to be sound like trip, full step, and trip, full step, and trip, full step, and trip, full step. And that and is that extra change in between. So you go five, six, seven, eight. Kick, ball, change, step, 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 kick. Ball change, step, kick, ball change, step. That's, I'm sure, going smoothly for you. Sometimes it takes a few reps before it starts to, to click because there's a lot of this going on. Uh, if you have the brain capacity right now, it's going to make it actually easier for you if you can put that pulse back into it. So it's not... Um, a, it looks a little stiff. B, it makes that body kind of square. It goes heat that, 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 heat that, that, that. Um, if you don't have that pulse in there. So this actually gives us the rhythm in our, our triple step feeling, our kickball change feeling uh, that we're looking for. That swung, do, da, da, slow, quick, quick. Woo, ba, da, da, woo, ba, da, da, do, ba, da, da. And I'm going to stop the kicks. Da, 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 da. And that quarter note pulse. Woo, ba, da, 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 da. So let's try that all together. Um, get your butt moving as I count you in, and then we'll start with that kick to the right. Five, a six, a five, six, seven, eight. Kick, ball, change, and kick, ball, change, and kick, ball, change, and kick, ball, change, and kick, change, and kick, ball, change, and kick, ball, change, and kick, ball, change. Make sense? I hope so. Uh, if not, though, you have the comments over there. Don't feel, feel uh, scared to use them. Um, well, I'm going to... You're going to put us into the next step because the transitions can be a little bit weird until you get to know them. Um, the good news is we've done this step a bajillion times. It's not a weird version of Suzy Q's. It's just a shortened version of the practice drill that we normally do. So we're doing four counts that way and four counts that way. So we went... So we have one more ball change at the end, right? One, and two, and three, and four and five, and six, and seven, eight, and one. Uh, and that's going to take us into our normal Suzy cues. One, two, three, four. Four is our normal eight, right? It's where that leg comes up. Five, six, seven, eight. And eight's going to be a touch with this uh, right leg, so I can go back into my scissor kicks. That's what's happening. Let's break it down. So let's start with the first scissor kicks. I'm going to do that same thing I did last time where I slow the heck down going into the Suzy Q's and see if you can follow along. So we'll go five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven, eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do that one more time without the awkward tempo shift. I think it's a little easier to follow along when I'm consistent. Five, a six, a five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven, eight and one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
One and two and three and four and five and six and seven eight and one two three four five six seven eight. Hopefully that makes sense at least up here. Keep bouncing and the knowledge will go from your head down to your feet so it's shaken down. Um, but if you do have questions, hit me up. Um, let's go back and connect that to the section before because again, transitions can be the wonky bits. Um, so we've got our, this is our um, boogie drop section, right? So we have our melody. Do, 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 do. Boogie rock back, kick, cross, rock, step. Boogie rock back, kick, cross, rock, step. Boogie rock back, kick, cross, touch. So let's try that with the music. Uh, let's go from the top. Why the heck not? That groove is, is nice. <laughs> come to a moral dilemma. I'm going to listen to that one more time because I might change where I put the counts on something. Oh yeah, this is uh, choreography live. I want the emphasis to be on those even numbers in that, in that phrase, so we're going to do the same thing, kind of. <laughs> Starting with those scissor kicks, we're going to go 8 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5, 6 and 7. Uh, instead of doing the one on 1, we're going to start on count 8. Uh, that's going to change one thing about our Susie Q's entrance that will feel yummier for my heart. Um, so after we've gotten 8 and 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5, 6 and 7, I'm going to drop back on that left foot like I'm going to do another uh, scissor kick, but instead I'm going to use that as the kick on count eight before I shut the CCQ. So that kick is going to kind of go in front of me this time. So let's see if that makes sense. Sorry for the confusion. Uh, we're going to start with count eight with the scissor kicks. Five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. And that's just going to fit the song a lot nicer. So we're doing it, sacrificing me looking good in exchange for the music. Um, so let's try that all the way through one more time. And uh, remember that as we get into that uh, last phrase, we're really hitting that one, two, three, four. Uh, but we're doing it on the spiky bits. A lot of times when I'm lindy hopping, uh, especially if I'm dancing to big band swing, it'll be that heavy part that gets the two and four. Um, because this is a bit more modern sound, to me it sounds like that two and four is, is, is punching in, in the face as opposed to like chill and relax. Um, so that's what I wanna hit. Uh, so let's try it from the very top again one more time and adding that starting on eight to the scissor kicks and the scissor kicks. <laughs> Thank you. 
much yummier. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, any, any questions on that transition, hit me up in the comments there. I'd be happy to go over that again since I uh, changed the game on you there. Um, I want to go, I'm going to slow the song way the heck down. And I want to run it again. Don't worry so much about what I'm doing. I'll be up here dancing as a reference to you in case you forget the moves. But what I'd like you to do is listen for what the song's doing. Think about how your body wants to move to it. And uh, <laughs> you got it, Tiffany. Um, yeah, think about how your body wants to move to it. And try and, uh, even if it comes at the cost of the move, even if you sacrifice the quality of like what step you're doing, try and find that groove and move with what the music has you doing. You can come back to this video a bajillion times and practice the like actual steps, kick, cross, your rock, step, that whole bit. Um, but really throw yourself into the song right now. So if you end up freestyling it, gold stars all around. If you end up nailing the choreo and having the feeling, beautiful, I love it. If you get all the choreo right, but it feels dead, you're not dancing to the same song there. So the goal is, is passion at this point. Here is Organ Grinder Swing. Let's shake our butts. One, two, Five, six, seven. <laughs> All right, that feels so much better. Thank you for thank you for the, just changing with me. <laughs> Getting the beat on the wrong half is the weirdest thing. It gets like you're listening to a different song and the, the wrong song's playing for the song you're dancing to. Um, you'll see this happen all the time in improv dance competitions where dancers are like, yeah, I hear that, I hear that. And they go and the whole audience is going, oh no, because they're doing great stuff, but it's not quite in tune with the music. Um, so pro tip, if you're in a competition and you feel like you might be a little bit off where your partner has that look of like, oh no, on their face, take that phrase like we did at the beginning of the song and figure out where the beat is in the music, what the feel is of the music, and then come back in. Even if you're in the middle of a competition or a performance, it's worth it sometimes to be like, yeah. And nobody doesn't like this part of the concert, right? Like, yeah, everybody dig it, come join me. So be that confident person in the music by being willing to go, I don't know what's going on, and I'm willing to admit that to make sure the music gets uh, served correctly. Um, so uh, we're gonna add on uh, another step real quick that we're probably not gonna spend a ton of time on, but I wanna give it to a couple of you that I know are uh, more advanced dancers. Um, it's just, it's not particularly difficult, it's just another thing to, to add on. Uh, and then we're gonna go back and just run it a few times with music, because I wanna make sure we have a chance to engage with that. Um, so this is a uh, Frankie Manning swing out variation. Um, that, uh, that I sincerely and dearly love. Um, we used it a little bit. We actually referenced it a couple of weeks ago in a choreography. Um, uh, Frida Segerdahl does it uh, all the freaking time um, from the follow end, which is super cool. Um, but it's just kick, kick, ball change. Um, and it's a kick where you actually switch the feet. So I bring my right leg up, and I switch the feet so my left leg's up. So it's like you're falling backward in a cartoon and feet are kind of flying out in front of me. You just don't have that control. Uh, the secret to keeping it control is that whatever foot's on the ground comes here in the center instead of being off to the side like this, where I'm falling all the time. So when I, when I go from wherever I happen to be to that kick kick, I bring those feet into the center. Uh, that's not mandatory, and if the music is fast enough, you don't need that. Um, but it's a good place to start. And it's also a good turning technique if you wanted to go here and land. Pulling that foot in the center gives you a clear axis. So for now, let's practice that skill of bringing that foot into the center. So we're gonna go kick, kick, ball change. Um, there's a little bit of a push off my ankle on the second kick to syncopate this some. So I have this little bit of lift um, after, after the first kick, or the second kick. Kick, kick, ball change. Kick, 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 ball change. Um, and that ball change comes behind and in front. So the first step out of my left foot really goes 
under the center of my seat. So five, six, seven, eight, kick, kick, ball change. Um, the other thing about this one that we're gonna do is we're gonna go from kick, kick, ball change. Not going to here, you can if you want, but I'm coming into a, I'm ready to move forward stance. So five, six, seven, eight, kick, kick, ball change. All right, cool. Checking questions, cool, it's good. Um, so we're gonna do a kick, kick, ball change, and then a rock step, I know it's fancy. So yeah, kick, kick, ball change, rock, step, and then we're gonna step forward with your left, step back with your right, and kick, kick, ball change on the left. So it's a really quick whip around on that pivot turn. Um, so we have one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, kick, kick. So five, six, seven, eight. One and a three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, and three. Five, six, seven, eight. Kick, kick, ball change, rock, step, pivot, turn, kick, kick, ball change. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, and three. Making sense so far? Cool, looks good. Um, like I said, we're gonna kind of blitz through this a little bit faster than most of the room probably wants to go. Uh, if you don't get it, come back to the video, play with it. I just wanted to throw it in here because that's a classic Frankie Manning bit that I, I think everyone should get to engage with. And it kind of changes the way your swing out connection works. So if you're lucky enough to have a partner, Try putting that kick kickball change in in place of your one and two. So that would be like um, you can try that in your swing out wherever you want to. Um, I like that with this last riff that they added to the organ grinder swing. <laughs> And you can put it in there if you want to as well. Um, I'm gonna jump back to the original bit though. Um, that's just a little extra candy for those of you that want something more engaging, uh, more difficult to work on. Uh, but I wanna go through the song actually just a couple times in a row. Um, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to dance to this song, this time when you hear it. So try not to go, okay, I remember it goes like this. Try to go, yeah, I'm doing the step that comes next. I remember what step comes next. But because we don't have a bunch of really intricate stuff, we have these riffs that repeat. Um, think like, oh, it's, the Shorty George section, and then it's the Boogie Drop section, and then it's the Scissor Kick section. Um, so you don't have to think about all the details of the moves. You can feel about like, yeah, this is how that feels this time through the song. Um, so don't let the song get stale just because you practiced a choreography to it. All right, here we go from the top with the groove. One, two, Sweet. Um, so now your mission is to do the same thing, but don't do it the same way. So find something to change about yourself. Uh, if you're not sure, like, if it's too many moving parts to, like, well, I can't do a new move, I can't do a new styling on this, think about a way to hold your body that's slightly different and see how that informs your movement. So one easy one is to change the height in a section. It doesn't have to be the same all the way through the routine, but for, like, four eights, maybe choose, this one's going to be lower. This one's going to be proper, or however that works. Another one that's really easy to change the whole look is to go with your elbows. And wherever you move your elbows will change the whole feel of the move, too. Um, and it may not look great yet, but what it will do is it will inspire you to move in a different way because you've changed the way that your body's stacked on itself. So this time, 
pick one or two things to change, uh, and let's give it a go. One, two, All right, cool. If you have any last questions, now is a great time to type it into the comments there, and I'll see if I can answer them real quick. We're mostly out of minutes. Thank you for joining me on a Saturday, whatever time it is. I know for those of you in Hawaii, which we had a couple last week, it's real early, so thanks for getting up that early. Uh, and for those of you in Europe, it's the evening, so we're somewhere in between. Um, if you have questions about this stuff, they come up afterward when you're working through the video or doing your own thing, hit me up. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, uh, TikTok, like wherever you want to find me. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, I'm at Lindy Hopping, so it's not hard to remember. Um, also on Spotify, if you want some music to dance to, uh, my username is Lindy Hopping, IMG. Um, and I have a couple of public playlists up that have a few hundred songs that I recommend dancing to. Um, so check those out. Um, the, my favorite recommendations to make right now are to uh, find musicians who are still making the music, who can benefit from your purchases. Um, I, so that's, that's recommendation number one, is find folks who are actually making music right now and go to um, the, maybe, maybe the ones down here in the doodly that we just danced to today. Uh, but Bandcamp gives a really good cut of um, the profits to the musicians compared to other websites. So instead of buying it on iTunes or whatever, if you go to Bandcamp, which is the links down here in the doodly do again, um, they get a much better rate on that. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, check out musicians of color. Um, so one of the weird things about the swing dance scene right now is that we're doing an art form that was made up by black Americans to music that was invented by black Americans. Um, but there aren't a lot of black Americans making the music or doing the dance right now, percentage wise. And there are lots of reasons for that and people hypothesize about why. But what you want to do is um, really feature those that are doing that. Um, so uh, New York is one of the few cities where you can really find a, a good percentage. Uh, and New Orleans is another one of folks who are like really rocking it and, uh, and are people of color but are still like actively playing for dancers uh, and playing the swing era music. Uh, a lot of what's happened is that um, this music kind of went out of style 80 years ago. So folks have just moved on and that's totally fine. But when you, when you find those folks, uh, make sure to support them. Um, if you have uh, questions about any of that or, uh, or whatever else is going on in the world right now, um, well, I'm stuck at home, so hit me up and I'd, I'd love to chat with you about them. Um, otherwise, we'll be back on here on Saturday on YouTube. And if you are a Patreon subscriber, we'll be down on Wednesday at either 6.30 or 7. Uh, and that's a Zoom call, so it's a little more interactive, so you're able to ask questions and um, I can actually look at your dancing and give you feedback that way. And that one is less choreography, more technique. So we'll take like a move or two and really dig into them uh, and maybe talk about one particular old dancer from the 1930s and 40s and be like, this is how... Uh, I interpret their movement, and maybe I can help you find find your way through that a little bit too. Um, and uh, we'll see where that goes. But if you have questions about that, if you have any wish lists that you wish we'd create, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all on a dance floor, either virtually or in person, uh, hopefully real soon.